whistle pull. Chris Brown kicks off. Number 68, the left guard, he will see Coleman in the starting lineup at right tackle. Instead of a gain of eight, the ball back on the eight-yard line. First and 22, a quick hitter caught for a short game. Out across the 12 goes Peerless Price, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. The Tennessee backs and receivers, three wideouts to start the game. Jermaine Copeland, Peerless Price, and Marcus Nash, their leading receiver. Sean Price and an excellent pass-catching fullback. And Lewis is the tailback. And up front, from left to right, Clifton Riley, Teague Hamilton, and Coleman. Teague in all-conference center. The coaches say the strength of that line, the tackles, Clifton and Coleman.
and it didn't go anywhere. Fearless Price wrapped up immediately by Octavius McFarland. A lot of people don't give the Nebraska defense credit for their speed. Th that ball was thrown to the outside. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator of Tennessee, wants to make Nebraska defend the entire field. So he bunches receivers here, throws it outside, but watch the closing speed of the red shirts. That is why Nebraska is one of the better defenses in the country. They can run to the football. Third down and 12. Manning's four for four. But for only 13 yards. He's under pressure. A short pass. And Derek Edmonds, the reserve fullback, is thrown down immediately. Again, Erwin Sweeney in on the stop for Nebraska. So the penalties have really hurt Tennessee on its first two possessions, and the Volunteers will punt again five minutes in. Well, remember, we said at the beginning of the telecast, the Tennessee offensive line has got to keep Peyton Manning clean. That's not a sack, but it's a little bump, and who knows with that knee of his, they've got to make sure they keep him clean all night. Fair waiting for the punt from Cush. Cush came to Nebraska as a walk-on, and that was not a very good punt. Down at the... 37-yard line. And more than some of the Tennessee players believe the reason they're such a big underdog in this game is that people are thinking about that SEC team, Florida, getting hammered two years ago by Nebraska. Another flag down. Manning trying to stretch the defense. Throws incomplete, looking for Marcus Nash. He was well covered by Ralph Brown, an outstanding quarterback. Since his first team all Big 12 this season, but we check out the flag of the line. Jamal Lewis, the great freshman tailback at Tennessee, has got to get into the game. He's got to become a factor. And the Tennessee offense improved dramatically this season once they did establish the ground game with the emergence of Lewis. Here is Lewis fighting for a couple out to the 43, tackled there by Jason Peters. Lewis rushed for 1,364 yards this season, and you have to remember he started only nine games. He was not the starting tailback at the beginning of the season. In the first three games of the season as a team, Tennessee rushed for 100 yards, just more than 99. Since then, you see what they've done, a dramatic improvement, more than 168 yards per game on the ground. Well, and it took Lewis a little time to learn pass protection, and in this offense, you have to protect Peyton Manning when you're running back. Second down, Lewis trying to get outside. He has a great combination of power and speed, and he's across midfield. Mike Rucker made the tackle. That's a gain of eight. This is, this is what I was referring to. Tennessee, if they become two-dimensional, if they can run and throw the ball, they can attack the Nebraska defensive team effectively. If they are one-dimensional, they're playing into the hands of what Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, wants them to do. Lewis provided the first first down of this game for either team. Ball at the 49 of Nebraska. Manning with time. As a receiver, first down at the 31-yard line. Andy McCullough tackled by Ralph Brown, the senior from the Peyton Manning had plenty of time to get back, get planted, and put that ball on the target. That is what will affect this team as much as anything. Give your great player, Peyton Manning, time to throw. Derek Edmonds now in at fullback, leading the way for Lewis. Good cut back to the inside, and Jason Peter helped drive him back. Jason Wiltz, the other defensive tackle also at the bottom of the pile. Defensive tackle also at the bottom of the pile. When we chatted with David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee earlier this week. He meant no disrespect toward this Nebraska defense, but he felt that Florida defense as a group was better, tougher. Well, there's, there's no question about it. The, ten the Tennessee, the Tennessee uh, coaches certainly have a lot of respect for this defense, but they're not awed by it. When they played Florida, they played one of the better defenses in the country, a fierce pass rush, really no different than Nebraska in the Tennessee coaches' minds. 5.20 remaining. In the first quarter, no score. The pay incomplete. Now third down and seven. Neither team has converted on third down tonight. Manning again with plenty of time. And that's caught for a first down. Sean Bryson. Tackled by Irwin Sweeney. Wistrom, the great player, is working against Chad Clifton. 6'5", 
67. Clifton won that particular war. The pitch to Lewis. Bryson leading the way. Lewis hit hard and fumbled. And Nebraska has recovered. Ralph Brown knocked it out, and Mike Rucker recovered the fumble at the 21-yard line. What a hit by Brown, and Rucker pounced to the football. I said earlier that you're always concerned about field position and turnovers. That's what you preach to your team in the locker room before the opening kickoff. Jamal Lewis, a young player, just didn't have the ball put away quite tight enough, and consequently, Ralph Brown gets off the block, makes a great tackle, the ball's loose, Nebraska recovers. After the fumble by Jamal Lewis at the 22 of Nebraska, the Cornhuskers went 78 yards. It took eight plays. And Frost was three for three on the drive with Tennessee concentrating on stopping the run. He hurt them with the pass. Chris Brown. Bounces it down the field. Nice hop for Cedric Wilson, the true freshman. He's in trouble. And stopped short of the 20-yard line. Knocked down to the 17. Put Finley in on the stop. In the Tennessee huddle, the player running on late. They'll have to hurry to get this playoff. Play clock at three. Mark Levine now the tailback. He's out to the 21, tackled by Tony Ortiz. Levine was the starting tailback at the beginning of the year before Lewis won the job. You know, you go back, Mark Levine. In spring practice. Tight end's not a big part of the passing attack. As a matter of fact, UT tight ends have just three catches this year. Mark Levine, the running back, fell Ooh. into his right knee. It was a good block by Peoples, but all of a sudden he got hit from the behind there. Levine again. Big hole. Mark Levine breaks free. Good move on Warfield. And he's tackled out of the 48-yard line by Carlos Polk, a backup linebacker. Gain of 27 for Levine. And Polk is slow to get up for Nebraska. Nebraska wants to make sure they eliminate the running game. Tennessee has established early in this game that they are capable of finding some creases in that Nebraska front. So far, Levine found them. So did Jamal Lewis. It's encouraging if you're a Tennessee fan. Jamal Lewis trotting along the Tennessee sideline. Might have been injured on that hit that caused the fumble. Play action pick, a good one by Manning. He throws into coverage and it's almost intercepted by Mike Brown. He was looking for Marcus Nash. And it was nearly picked off by the sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Mike Brown made a great break on the ball very close to an interception that could have gone the distance and he'd been able to hang on to it. Brown was an outstanding two-way player in high school in Arizona. The Arizona High School Player of the Year as a senior. He won the award as the best running back in the state and also the best defensive back. Manning. That pass deflected and intercepted by Eric Warfield. Warfield at the 30 and tackled from behind at the 25-yard line by Sean Bryson. Manning has seen this before. His receivers had a tough time hanging on in the SEC championship game against Auburn, and as a result, the Volunteers just did squeak out a victory. Well, you have to wonder, Jermaine Copeland, number six, a wide receiver, he is dragging across the formation, but Peyton Manning throws a hot ball here. This ball is an underneath route, and it needs to be a little bit lower and a little softer. It's a little bit hot. I don't say that Jermaine Copeland shouldn't have caught it, but it wasn't an easy catch. Third interception of the season for Warfield, the only senior starter in the secondary for Nebraska. He hails from Texarkana, Arkansas. The end of the Cush, son of a former Husker. His father, Bill, was a defensive back on their 70 and 71 national championship teams. 
Jesse hangs it up high. Oh, another fumble! And a touchdown for Nebraska! Lance Brown ran it in, but it was a muff punt, so the ball will come back to the 15-yard line. But it's another key mistake by Tennessee. It'll be first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Terry Fair could not handle the punt. Sean, right before he dropped this punt, I was about to say what a terrific stop by the Tennessee defense. What a job they did on defense. But the muff punt obviously brings them back into a very... Chris Brown to kick off again. He bounces it. A short kick taken by Brian Darden, a backup running back. And quality field position for the Volunteers. Victory to Sway Voters. Perhaps earned at least a share of the national championship. Voters have been flip-flopping all year. Jamal Lewis back in the game. Two hands around the ball as he dove to the 43-yard line where he was chopped down by Mike Brown. You know, it's funny about turnovers. When we, we talk about turnovers, Tennessee, nine turnovers in the last six quarters. Sometimes... They just come. On second and five, Manning. Flag thrown. And Marcus Nash has a holding against Nebraska. There's Grant Wistrom, including a brilliant career at Nebraska. For the second year in a row, he's a first team All-American in football. He's also the first team academic All-American. First down. For the second straight year, the only other Nebraska player to have that double-double. Dave Remington. Grant Wistrom is a pre-pharmacy major, very difficult major. He carries a 3.43 grade point average. Well, he was a Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in 96 and 97. Manning. Make the draw, throws, nice catch. The receiver helped him there, Jermaine Copeland. Ball Lewis, the lone back. Marcus Nash, the motion man. Lobbed out to Lewis. Tom Osborne changed his philosophy and went to recruiting more speed, and they have plenty of speed on this squad. Lewis, down to the 30-yard line. Tennessee trails 14 to nothing. Manning throws short of a first down. We'll see where the forward progress is spotted. Mike Brown put the hit on Jermaine Copeland. Looks like the ball will be just inside the 27, meaning they're about two full yards short of the first down. So Philip Fulmer sends on the field goal. And Scott is the holder. That is right down the middle, and Tennessee is on the board. With 8.28 remaining in the first half. Manning came to the sidelines, was not real happy that they didn't go for it on fourth, but then he immediately came over to the offense and he said, guys, even though we didn't go for it on fourth, it's our job to get first downs. Don't put it on the coaches to make that decision. Peyton looked sharp tonight at 11 of 14 for 70 yards, and he had the one here on CBS. Tonight it's the FedEx Orange Bowl on CBS. Final game for Peyton Manning. As quarterback at the University of Tennessee, Lewis up the middle. That's five. They're moving against the fifth best defense in the nation in total defense. Manning in the flat, and it's incomplete. Low ball looking for Andy McCann. Well, the Nebraska defense, the black shirts, fifth in total defense, third against the run, 12th in scoring. I think when you compare them to Michigan, most would say Michigan has the better defense. But many would make the argument Nebraska has a much better offense. Nebraska averaged 47 points per game. Michigan never scored more than 38 in a single game. Manning under pressure. Has a man in the flat and went through the hands of Lewis. A little bit high. Warren was putting the heat on Manning. And the option just gets stripped. It's just a great play by Terry Fay. Finally, a turnover goes in favor of Coach Fulmer. Time show. All the bowl games. Lewis up through a big hole. Look at him power his way across the 40. And now Tennessee will use the timeout. A running play to see if they could get something to get some breathing room. And 
then perhaps take a chance, and that's what they'll do now. One timeout left for the Volunteers, 26 seconds left in the half. They're out at the 42. When you're backed up like Tennessee was, whatever you do, you don't want to turn the ball over. It's a great lead back, a block by the fullback, Sean Bryson, and Jamal Lewis showing why he is such a strong runner as a freshman tailback. This guy has powerful legs. He drags Nebraska tacklers with him. And he hasn't had a bad first half except for that one fumble that occurred to him. Early. Tennessee may take a shot down the field with 26 seconds left in the half here. Why not? Now that they're at the 42. Manning hit as he throws. That might be a compelling argument. Why not? Grant Wistrom finally got to Peyton Manning. No problems with the knee as Manning gets back up with 23 seconds left in the half, second and 10. Well, it's surprising because Tennessee's line has done a reasonable job tonight giving Peyton Manning plenty of time, but on this particular play, Grant Wistrom coming on an inside stunt puts tremendous pressure on Peyton, and like you say, you'll worry about that knee as the game goes on. Three straight incompletions thrown by Manning. Second and 10. Peter got through, but the pass is caught by Marcus Nash. Nash hit hard, but he held on at the 40. And Tennessee looking to the sideline to see if the last timeout will be used. Tony Ortiz made that hard hit on Nash. They have one timeout left. And I don't think Peyton wanted it called. I, I, but it was. You can see. 15 seconds left and no timeouts. If they go over the middle, they'd have to get up very quickly to spike. Get out of bounds. Oh, he stayed in bounds and lunges for a first down. The one break for Tennessee could be that it's close to a first down. They should at least stop the clock for a measurement here. The officials conferring and the half ends. Oh, I think that's a very bad piece of officiating there. They otherwise had a good half, but that was right at the 30-yard line. And very close to a first down. But it took the referee, Terry McCauley, a long time to get in position to see. He tried to stop the clock. Chris Brown's kick off at the goal line. Nice move to get across the 20. And now he powers out to the 20. On that drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, 74 of them on the ground. And the one pass, which the official score deemed the pass, was that shovel pass. They had 74 yards rushing on the opening drive of the half, which is 69 yards rushing the entire first half. Jamal Lewis out to the 29. On second and eight, they show patience with the run, but it yields nothing that time. Mike Rucker and Jason Peter. Wide receivers, no tight end for Tennessee. Manning running out of time. He's sacked by Mike Rucker. The first sack of Manning tonight. Mike Rucker, the left defensive end, number 84. He runs a little inside stunt move. He's the one that comes underneath, slips on a little crack in the Tennessee line there to sack Peyton Manning. Peyton just never had time to get that on. Max Orange Bowl from Miami. Nebraska has taken control, leading by 25. Still five minutes left in the third quarter. Cedric Wilson ran into traffic at the 27-yard line. First and ten. Tennessee needs to do something, and they need to do it from the 32. Second and six. A lob looking for Nash. He has it. And he's across midfield. Erwin Sweeney made the tackle. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Peyton Manning here under rush. They got him on that knee a little bit. Dave Foreman hit him after the ball was gone. Jamal Lewis off right tackle. Found the hole. He's down at the 41-yard line. Quality gain of seven on first down. Back in the starting lineup as a junior. Second on the team with those 61 tackles. Three and a half minutes remaining. Third quarter. Manning throws. Caught again by Nash. No, incomplete now, say the officials. And Nash was wide open. 
benefit about that being an Aaron throw. Nash slipped, and that might have hurt his chances of catching it. Manning throws short of Jermaine Copeland. Now it's fourth down. And first half, but he's starting to turn it up, and he's a guy that just gives you great second effort all the time. He's always working at getting to the quarterback. Big play here for Tennessee as they cling the hopes of a comeback. Fourth and four, Blitz caught, first down. He had the forward progress beyond the marker as Eric Warfield put the collar on Jermaine Copeland, but it is a first down. Locked out of three minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. Lewis close to another first down. He had one man to beat and he was gone. Instead, it's a gain of nine. Harris, he gets the hand up again. Burst through the hole. Ran into his own man and that might have prevented a touchdown. Instead, he's down at the five-yard line. Tackled by Eric Johnson, a reserve linebacker. 23 yards on the rush for Lewis and the volunteers are on the move. Jamal Lewis on the isolation play finds a crack in the Nebraska defense. He will go ahead and cut this ball back, and he's going to run in to Jermaine Copeland. <laughs> Number six is right in the way. He makes the tackle or, or at least prevents the touchdown for sure. Hold him down long enough for Johnson to make the stop. First and goal at the five. Manning looking in the end zone. Running out of time. Throw. Price with the reception for the Tennessee score. And it appears they will go for two. You saw Manny holding up the two fingers and the sideline held up two, looking back at the offense. Peyton Manning is a quarterback who can throw on the run as well as he works out of the pocket. Tennessee does a good job. They get him away from the pressure of Nebraska by sprinting him out, buying him time enough to find the open receiver. It's amazing how much better Peyton Manning's knee is in just a couple of days. We watched him practice that play a couple of days ago, and he really hobbled as he rolled to his right tonight. No sign of any hit. Sean, it's amazing. I didn't think he was healthy for the ball game, but he clearly is. Out of the shotgun, the try for two. He throws incomplete. Looking again for Peerless Price. Erwin Sweeney had the coverage. Every week's been sudden death for them. Now they've got to sit in there and be competitive and just ponder going back. <laughs> no, no, no. Darden out to the 30-yard line. Only a lot figure in the state of Tennessee. Lewis tackled from behind by Jason Peter. Terrific play by Peter when it looked like Lewis was ready to break away. You wonder if the balls are going to go without a huddle now. They won't have time to see. Eight Manning. Each in his final game at his respected university. Manning throws very short. Out to the 30. Tennessee's not tackling as well this half as they did in the first half. Nebraska 227 yards rushing in the third quarter. Jamal Lewis chopped down short of a first down, about a yard short. Brandon Harrison, junior from Gainesville, Texas. Backup quarterback made the tackle. He's in his first year in Nebraska as a junior college transfer. On a down 35 to 9. 14 minutes left. One yard to go. They're punting. 9-14 remaining. Manning pass incomplete. Here's team. It's, it's been a great experience for them. It's been a great experience for, for the Manning family. We've had a wonderful time. Take a short break for the play. And as a light rain begins to fall, Manning's pass for Lewis. And Jamal thrown for loss back to Ed. As a parent, he made a huge decision last year to, to turn down a lot of money and come back. What was it like as a parent to see him make that decision? Well, we were proud of him. It, it had to be his decision, and we were going to support him if he had come out. But it, it, in his heart, it's what he wanted to do. And we were proud the way he did all the research and his due diligence, and that's what he wanted to do. I think it, it's, it said a lot. I, made, I think it had an impact on some others. And, you know, I'm glad it worked out for him. I'm glad he was able to stay healthy this year, and, and they won a championship. And um, he's, I'm glad he stayed. He, he is, too. We're proud of him. Archie, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the ball game. Pass incomplete. Here comes the punting unit. 
Well, believe it or not, there is another Manning coming along. Peyton's younger brother, Eli, is a high school quarterback, a junior in New Orleans. Some say at that stage of his development, he's better as a junior in high school than Peyton Manning was, and if that's the case, it's a frightening prospect, but Eli already very highly recruited. No question about that, Sean, but if he I is, think this is certainly understandable. Peyton Manning has done absolutely everything he could in his power for the University of Tennessee. This is a good opportunity for T. Martin. Also, you, you make sure Peyton Manning comes out of this game healthy. I think this is the right decision. Why not give Manning one more play and let him run off to an ovation that he has deserved? Well, either way, but... Not a lot of Tennessee fans left here, Sean. <laughs> handoff up the middle. Travis Stevens, a true freshman, taking the handoff. Manning ends his career holding every passing record at the University of Tennessee. The SEC Player of the Year this year. And he ranks number one all-time in the SEC in completion percentage and completions and in lowest interception ratio. And you know he hates ending his career like this. He's such a fierce competitor. Martin, reasons things didn't work out exactly, probably as he would have wished. But that's life, and, he, and you learn something there too. That's all part of the experience. And he talked about the experience. That's why he came back. He wanted to continue with his college education and with that experience. Let's turn our attention to the larger issue now. Who is number one? The best team in the nation. This situation again cries out for a playoff because it's obviously difficult to choose either team whichever team is not the national championship is going to feel that it is short change with good reason but here's the statistical comparison our crew I don't think was overly generous in awarding Nebraska a victory in this game nice throw by Martin and Andy McCullough's running free in the secondary you know, much was made that Michigan played a tougher schedule, but I think as we look at the bowl game results, Terry, the Big Ten might have been exposed for not being as strong as people said it was all season long. The Big Ten really struggled in bowl games, two and five, including Michigan's victory. And uh, their out-of-conference games, Baylor and Notre Dame and Colorado, Beginning of the year, that looks tough, but Notre Dame had a disappointing year. Colorado had a very disappointing year. Baylor was not a very good team. Where Nebraska out of the league went out and played a very good Washington team in Seattle, as you know, one of the toughest places in the nation to play, and won easily. Well, like those guys, they did everything they were asked to do. Yes, they did. Martin lost his helmet, and he is sacked, and there is a flag. That's just what I believe. I remember, I remember in 90... Uh, Colorado, Georgia Tech, they shared it. I agree with you, by the way. N I'm just saying, I know you for do. those who awarded the thing to Michigan. A national championship is such a special thing to players and coaches. It means so much. T. Martin can really run. He's inside the five. T. Martin into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Andy McCullough. The air apparent to Peyton Manning drives the volunteers down the field and final act for Grant Westrom and Jason Peter at Nebraska it seems will be to give time. In the end zone. Well, they're all set. I'm, I'm telling you, that is cold when you get that little shower there, but you love every second of it. Now the try for two. Martin was four for four on that drive. He swings it out. And there's the two-point conversion for Travis Stevens, the true freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee. 42-17, Nebraska. Wistrom and Peter inching closer. The kicking team. Penalties decline. First down. And the legacy of Tom Osborne. Here we go. There, ooh. Another bad added to that legacy. 